Hey, what's up? This is Chosen, and this is going to be Volume 2 of 10 Tips and Tricks that every Diablo player should know about and use, so let's get into it. Just a couple things really quickly before I get into the 10 tips. This is a response to the other Tips and Tricks video that I did uh, about a year ago. I'll have that one pop up if you haven't seen it, and also this video is targeted more towards people coming back to D3 after a while or newer players of Diablo 3. So if you are an extremely advanced player, this video isn't going to be really targeted towards you. But yeah, let's get into the 10 tips. There is a way to customize your mouse. You may have seen a lot of Diablo streamers or, you know, some people who play if you watch. Uh, sometimes they have this customized mouse and this is actually called YOLO mouse. I will provide a link in the video description to download this if you want to try it out. And Basically, it just lets you customize your cursor. There's a few different looks that it can give you. I usually go with this one. It lets you change the color. So you can kind of make your mouse stand out a little bit more. Give it a little bit of flair. And, you know, with Diablo being the game it is with lots of things going on, you know, on the screen at once, it can be nice to kind of customize your cursor and give it a different look so that it stands out a little bit more on screen. When things are on the ground, you can hit control to pop up a little toolbox that shows exactly what that ground is. And what, this comes in handy when you're speed farming, super end game, and you don't, you're don't you not necessarily picking up everything. You can hold control, mouse over it, and you can see if it's something you want to pick up or not to go back for. Also, if you're a brand new player or it's a new season or you're leveling a character 1 to 70... This, and you're still at a point in the game where you're wearing whites and blues and yellows that drop on the ground and you're constantly changing your gear. While it's on the ground, you can hold control and it will show you on the bottom those damage, toughness, and recovery stats so you can see if something helps you out before you even pick it up and have to go through your inventory. So I equipped some rare shoulders just to kind of show this example. And if I were playing, like if I'm level 17 or something and these dropped, you know, some rare shoulders and I, I could be like, oh... Awesome, those are an upgrade, so I can pick them up, throw them on, and keep going. And I don't even have to, like, pick them up, look in my inventory, or do anything like that. So, using control of things that are on the ground can help you kind of move more, just move more fluidly through the game without having to sort through your inventory constantly. When you are power leveling somebody, you want to have a game on Torment 6, Adventure Mode, Start Game. And the most important thing I wanted to mention in this is do your power leveling in Fields of Misery. And also, I mentioned this in my last video, but just to reiterate, you want to have a Gem of Ease in your weapon. You know, if you've got the damage, you're not going to need the Emerald in your weapon. So make sure and have the Gem of Ease in there. Then what we're going to do is go Act 1, Cemetery of the Forsaken. Go up to the northwest, and this is actually crazy. There's an enlightened shrine right here, so that would be great. But I'm not going to take that just to kind of make it realistic here. But go to the northwest to this bridge by the Fields of Misery. Then have the person you're power leveling teleport on you and just sit on this bridge. That's all they have to do. They don't have to move. They just sit there. And then you'll notice when I have that Gem of Ease and them sitting there on the bridge by Fields of Misery. Boom. Boom. Look, they are already level 29, and that was, what, five seconds. So, the Fields of Misery is huge. You can clear it twice, and they'll probably be level 70. Definitely, if you have the Gem of Ease in your weapon, it's level 30 in, you know, five, ten seconds. So, within five minutes, you should be able to get the person you're power leveling to level 70 using Gem of Ease and Fields of Misery. When you are going to teleport on somebody, like, use these banners... Have your screen clear and take advantage of the immunity factor. You can't take damage for one minute when you do this if you don't click anything. So when you teleport, just click the banner and then do nothing. And you see how they're attacking the character I teleported on, but they are not attacking me. I am completely immune for a minute. And this can help you from dying to like molten explosions and stuff when you teleport on people. I, I see all the time people are like doing rifts they teleport on somebody there's a bunch of molten explosions going off and boom they die or proc their cheat death or whatever and for hardcore players you can get yourself in some scary situations so take advantage of the immunity I did a whole video on testing how stasis immunity works I'll have that pop up and it's also in the video description but that kind of goes more in depth into it but this also works on like rift doors doors to new levels in rifts as long as you're going into a new area you can take advantage of that stasis immunity effect for one minute taking zero damage 
everyone out there should know about and use this d3resource.com that I will provide a link down in the video description. Go ahead and, you know, especially if you're a new player, kind of read through some of these screens. And even for extremely experienced players, this is things that we will go to on a regular basis. Just to look at, like, the difficulty overview is a really cool one. The One of the things I want to point out about why this can be so valuable is if you're farming bounties. If you go down here to Herodric Cash Materials, you can see that we get the same amount whether we're on Master or Normal. So there's no point to do Hard, Expert, or Master. You might as well do Normal. And the same concept applies here from Torment 1 to Torment 6. We're going to be getting 6 materials whether we're on Torment 1 or Torment 6. So we might as well do either Torment 1 or Torment 7. There's no point to do Torment 8 or 9. It's going to be either doing Torment 7 or Torment 10. And looking at this chart can really help you kind of catch things like that. And just, you know, give you the ability to play Diablo 3 with a lot more knowledge and insight to exactly how everything works. In terms of maximizing your toughness, you want to strive for stacking the effect that is opposite of your main stat. So I'll kind of explain what I mean there. In Diablo 3, Intelligence gives you all resistance, and Dexterity and Strength give you armor. So, basically, if you're on an Intelligence class, you're probably going to have an abundance of all resistance, which means you want to stack armor to avoid diminishing returns. If you're on a Strength or Dexterity class, you're probably going to have a lot of armor, so you want to try to stack all resistance so that you can avoid you know having too much of one or the other you want both you want a good synergy of armor and all res and it comes down to the class you play so basically if you're on an intelligence class you're going to want to try to get armor and if you're on a strength or dexterity class you're going to want to try to get all res and usually this is on pieces like boots and pants and gloves where you can have kind of the choice between armor or all res but yeah just something to keep in mind in terms of kind of min maxing your toughness when you are going to be farming bounties you want to do the bounties that involve key wardens first so that you can kind of double dip and be more efficient so that you can get the hellfire amulet requirement machines while you're doing bounties instead of other people getting them and you know this can kind of be a scummy move if you're playing with friends you might not want to do this but if you join a public game and you're just doing bounties absolutely go through and look and see which bounties are part of a key warden so like right here we see the key warden act one that wouldn't qualify so we go to act two and we can see dalgar oasis is a bounty and also a key warden so that is one that you would want to prioritize when you're doing bounties it's just going to help you be efficient. Like I said, you're going to be farming the things you need to get a Hellfire Amulet while you're doing bounties. So when you're in a public game, go ahead and prioritize those bounties so that you can kind of farm two things at once. When you finish a GR and Urshi comes to give you the ability to upgrade your legendary gems after the GR, it actually shows those gems in order that they occur in your stash. So... Let's say I'm going, I want to upgrade my Bane of the Stricken. What I want to do is move this to the top left of my stash. And now when I finish the GR, there's no need to scroll through or, you know, wonder where is that gem I wanted to upgrade. It's just going to be right there, top left, first choice. Boom, right after the GR, I upgrade my gem and I'm good to go. So just something to kind of keep in mind if you're, if you have a ton of these gems, you know, as far as backup gems and stuff. If you got one you're focusing on, just go ahead, throw it up here in the top left position in your stash. And then when you finish the GR, it'll be right there, ready for you to upgrade. Probably one of the most common questions I get in YouTube comments or people, you know, that interact, that I interact with on the channel and stuff is what difficulty should I be playing on? How do I know, you know, from T1 to T13 and, and all the GR levels you have to choose from, how do I know what level to play on? And... The way to determine this, in my opinion, in Diablo 3, speed is king. You want to be clearing content as fast as possible, but you want to find that sweet spot where you're still getting progression, where it's not too easy. So what I usually recommend is you want to be doing your regular rifts, like farming for GR keystones. You want to be doing those in under two minutes. 
don't force yourself to do T13 if it's not efficient. You're way better off doing T11 or T12. And then for GRs, if you're speed farming, you want to find a GR level that takes about three or four minutes. And kind of a barometer to go by when you're selecting these is you want elite fights to take under two seconds. So like when you engage an elite pack, 1-1000, 2-1000, dead. Like you don't want to be sitting there hacking on an elite pack for 10, 20 seconds. You're not being efficient. Lower the difficulty if that's happening. And I like to be at a difficulty where you're blowing them up in one to two seconds. That can kind of give you the gauge of if you're going fast enough to play at an optimal speed farming level. So yeah, regular rifts, do them in under two minutes. If you're speed farming GRs for like legendaries and gem upgrades, you want to be somewhere in that three to four minute mark and killing elite packs in under two seconds. Okay, and lastly, I wanted to kind of talk about how exactly GR scaling works because I think this is something that a lot of people don't exactly understand the mechanics of it. And I just kind of wrote it on a black background here and I'll explain how it works. So when you go up a level of GR, the mobs are going to gain 17% health and do 13% more damage to you per level. So these numbers aren't accurate. This is just kind of something I did to, you know, as easy math or to represent what's actually going on. So let's say at GR level one, a mob does 50 damage and has a hundred hit points. When we go up to level two, that damage is going to go up 13%. So it's going to go from 50 to 57. The HP of the mob is going to go up 17%. So it's going to go 100 to 117. And the reason that I did the five levels here, you know, GR one to GR five is to kind of explain a mechanic that is kind of known in the Diablo 3 community. And that is the 5 GR levels is basically going to double the hit points of the mobs. Pretty close. It's going to go from here 100 to 187. So to go from level 1 to level 5, you're going to have to do about double the damage if the GR is taking you the full time. To go from level... 95 to level 100 you're going to have to almost double your damage um or you know get a lot more efficient but this just kind of gives you an idea of exactly what's happening behind the numbers in terms of mob health and damage as you go up in gr levels Alrighty, that's going to do it for 10 tips and tricks that every Diablo 3 player should know about and use, Volume 2. If you have any questions or have any other kind of neat tips and tricks that you think people should know about, definitely leave it in the comments. I'd love to hear what you guys think. And as always, have a good rest of your day. Thanks for watching. Peace.